Hello everyone, my name is Favius Beck, and I'm here to talk to you about Moog's latest VST, known as Mariana. Mariana is a bass synthesizer. Let me go ahead and drop this onto a MIDI track so we can check it out. Uh, it's a bass synthesizer that's actually not just monophonic, but there's a duophonic mode that we'll look at in a bit. Uh, and this can be especially useful because as we look at the interface here, uh, in the top, we can see that there's different labels that'll take us to different areas of this synth. And there's synth one and control one. Synth one has all the oscillator parameters. Control one has a bunch of modulators that we can use to modulate uh, all these wonderful parameters here. And we also see synth two, which is a separate oscillator. Uh, we have control two, so even more modulation options. And synth one and synth two can be blended together here at the output. Uh, so we can actually have both of them playing. We see synth one level, synth two level. Currently, the second synth is muted, but we can always unmute that. Uh, we can pan these to get a wider sound if we want. Uh, we have some synth effects. But as I also mentioned, instead of just blending both synths together, if you want, we can go over here and click on the settings gear, and we can actually set this to a duophonic mode. So then that way, we can make it so that as we're playing notes, maybe we alternate between synth one and synth two. Uh, so if you don't want to use this just as a monophonic synth, you do have some ways to create some harmonies uh, and play some intervals together. But beyond that, what I really, really like is the fact that there are some very robust and flexible modulation options. Uh, this synth is also MPE capable. So as I go through this uh, little tour of Mariana, I'm going to be using Push 3 from Ableton, uh, and I will enable some MPE functionality so we can check all that out as well. But first things first, uh, my goal here is to create uh, a basic beat using just Mariana. So creating a bass sound, uh, creating some drum synths, and also creating some sort of pad or atmospheric texture to go along with it. So as we do that, we'll be... Now, as I said, I'm using Push 3 as my MIDI controller, and I mentioned this because Push 3 uh, allows us to use MPE, uh, and it also has aftertouch which is also known as channel pressure. And in this case, we can see with this patch, here's a low pass filter. There's a little green arc here on the cutoff knob. And as I was playing notes, if I apply pressure to the note, that allows me to modulate the low pass filter. Now this is something we can set up pretty easily, but since we see it here on this uh, little system-based patch, let's check out how this was routed, all right? If we look in the upper left corner, there's an M here and M stands for modulation. Let's click on this, all right? It says click a knob for modulation. If I click on any of these knobs, if they are being modulated, I'll be able to see here are modulation sources, and any modulation sources that are currently active will have a little filled in circle. So my cutoff frequency, uh, I can modulate that by using pressure. How much will it get modulated by using pressure? Well, we can click over here, and now I can enable this as a modulation source specifically for this knob. The amount, if I increase the amount, for example, that's 30%. As I increase this, we can see this little green arc here uh, is basically showing me the amount. It's showing me the depth. So as I increase the direct amount here, and if I want a negative amount, I could do that too. All right, very cool. So uh, assigning these modulation sources to modulation targets is very easy. There's a lot of different stuff here and this can be very fun. Uh, so just to get started, I wanna talk about making a simple bass sound because uh, that'll give us a good idea of how we can take advantage of these oscillators uh, and pass some things through the filter. But I wanna start with a initial preset. So instead of starting with this, let's go up here and just choose initial preset. All right, so this has been initialized. Uh, all of the parameters should be at their default. All right, cool. So let's actually see what's going on before we start the sound design process. All right, if I go to the output, this is gonna let me know what I'm actually hearing, what effects are active, etc. I can see here synth one is the only thing audible. Synth two is currently muted. All right, so all the work that I'm gonna uh, focus on for this bass sound right now will happen with synth one. If I click here and go to synth one, uh, these are all the things that are gonna help me affect the timbre of my sound, all right? 
We have a dual oscillator section here. So there's two oscillators, but both oscillators share the same waveform, the same wave shape. Uh, however, we do have the ability to uh, detune oscillator two. We can also transpose oscillator two uh, by octaves. And we can utilize some hard sync, some oscillator sync, which can be a nice way to play with getting a different tone or timbre from these oscillators as well. First off, let's just see where we're at. I'm currently using uh, a sawtooth, we can see here, which is why this is so bright and buzzy. As we're looking at the wave shape, you can basically think of this as going from uh, less harmonic to more harmonic as we go from left to right. Although I guess technically when you go from the sawtooth to the square, you lose harmonics. But think of this as getting more bright, how about that? All right. Now, if I'm going for more of a bass type sound, I don't necessarily want it to be really bright, but if I'm generating more harmonics, that's more stuff that my filters can then work with to remove. All right. So I think I actually will go with, uh, yeah, let's go with the square. Square has a nice open kind of hollow sound. Right now, oscillator one is turned up. If I look at my mixer, I don't hear oscillator two currently. Right now, when I turn up oscillator two, it's basically just two voices that are exactly the same pitch, and this doesn't really help that much. Now, usually, a good way to take advantage of both of these oscillators would be maybe to slightly detune one of them to get a wider, kind of more chorusy sound. Right. If I double click, it goes back to its default setting and having this slightly detuned oscillator two uh, makes it a bit more interesting. Obviously too much is too much. We could also create interesting intervals. Uh, we can detune oscillator two or oscillator one uh, down or up seven semitones. So you can't get a full octave from the detune knob, but you can get a, a perfect fifth if we go up seven semitones. which could also be pretty interesting considering that we could modulate the volume of oscillator two so we only hear that so often. Again, if I'm going for a bass sound, I probably don't want to create an interval here though, so let's just bring this back and just ever so slightly detune it. And maybe I want oscillator two to be an octave higher, not two, there we go. Okay, not bad. Now, in addition to that, since I'm thinking primarily about bass, before I even get to the filter section, if I move over to the left, we have the ability to spread the oscillator voices and... Don't wanna to go too crazy with that. But I do like the sense of this feeling a bit wider. Generally, again, when you're dealing with bass, you wanna make sure the deepest frequencies of your bass stay pretty centered. So if I'm gonna spread these two oscillators a little bit, it might be nice to have my sub oscillator fill in the space underneath that and keep that right in the middle. We have the ability to change the waveform of the sub oscillator, and thankfully, uh, this is not linked to the wave shape of the dual oscillators. So even though my dual oscillators are pretty bright, I think I might wanna keep my sub oscillator as a sine wave um, and at least an octave below. So let's turn up the sub oscillator to hear how this feels in the bottom end. so we can hear that sub oscillator. All right, sounds much fatter now, I like that. Okay, let's move over here to the filter section now. I wanna take advantage of the filters. My oscillators run through my filters, but the way that they're routed through the filters depends on how I set this up over here. Right now, there's three filters. We have a low pass filter, a high pass filter, and then a sub filter. Currently, the high pass and low pass filter, I should say low pass and high pass, because that's the order. Uh, these are currently set to a serial configuration. And that means that the low pass filter outputs into the high pass filter, all right? 
I could use these both together and treat it almost like a really big band pass filter since uh, the low pass filter goes to the high pass. If we're looking at this in its default setup, basically with the low pass filter, I'm gonna cut the highest frequencies. And my high pass filter will cut the lowest frequencies. And you might notice as I'm doing that, the one thing that neither one of these filters are affecting is my sub oscillator, because that's controlled by the sub filter, all right? Now we have this oscillator crossover here, and let's say that um, I want to balance or blend the volume of the two filters, okay? Do I want to hear the dual oscillator filters or the sub filter more? Currently this is not on, so if I adjust this knob, it makes no difference. But let's go ahead and turn this on and just try to focus on these two filters here without the sub for now. All right, now it's just the sub. Now we got those. Nice. The main thing that I want to do is get some movement with the cutoff of the low pass filter primarily. Uh, and the movement here will be more interesting if I add some resonance. Right now, if I adjust the cutoff, it's not really all that interesting. If I add some resonance, and let me do this at a lower frequency, let's say around 1.2 kilohertz. Let's add some resonance. And now this particular frequency is more emphasized. It's more exaggerated. Um, and as I adjust the cutoff frequency, we're gonna hear uh, a bit more of a resonant tone, a resonant peak. This particular frequency will stand out a bit more. So let's go ahead and adjust the cutoff now. Let's add a little bit more resonance. Want to be careful. Okay, that's kind of cool. Now, like I said, when I play a note, I'd like for the cutoff here to move in some sort of way. And we have EG amount. EG stands for envelope generator. And how much is the filter envelope going to influence the cutoff frequency? Envelopes are triggered when we play a note. And the filter envelope can be found on the control page. So let me go over here to the control page, control one, and I want to utilize my filter envelope to uh, modulate the filter frequency at the beginning of every note. All right, and again, my sub oscillator is currently not active. We'll bring that back in. I just wanna really focus on the effect of what's happening here. I'm gonna increase the EG amount. We can see there's a negative amount or a positive amount. I wanna make it so that when I play a note, the filter gets brighter, the cutoff frequency increases. Okay, cool. So we can hear the effect, and since it's a modulator, uh, that means that I can still change the cutoff frequency, and the modulation is not gonna be deactivated, it'll just start from the current position. Okay, cool. So now that this is set up, I kind of like the movement. Let's go back to our filter envelope and let's shape this a bit more. All right. What's happening is when I play a note, the filter envelope determines uh, how quickly the filter value will increase or decrease. All right. Since the attack of my filter envelope is basically at zero, the filter frequency uh, immediately increases when I play a note. Maybe I don't want this to happen so quickly. Okay. That's actually kind of cool, just with that little bit of attack. And of course, I could always get more dramatic if I want. But something like this is cool. And I also wanna make it so that as I'm holding the note down, if I sustain it, I'd like the filter to go back to its original value. Right now the sustain here is like in the middle, it's at five. So if we look at the filter, this means that when I play the filter, we don't see that little line showing us how much it's being modulated. But basically when I play a note, the filter value is gonna increase 
And then it's not going to go back to the current value. It's going to go to basically halfway between the maximum modulation amount and this. And I don't want that. I want it so that when I'm holding a note down, the filter value will go back to the value it's currently set at. Okay, and now how quickly does the filter go back to the value that I've set it at? That's based on the decay time of my filter envelope. Right, so all these things, just to get the movement, just to get the, uh, yeah, the movement that I want from this particular sound. Now there's more things that I can do here, but ultimately I'd like to work with this in a musical context. Uh, and before I just keep twisting more and more knobs, uh, I wanna do some sort of pattern with this. Uh, and then maybe we can look at adding a bit of uh, some useful saturation or something from the output circuit over here. All right, so let's just tuck you away for a bit and uh, let's see what we can do musically to make this work in some sort of context. I think I want to turn this down, slow it down a bit. All right, let's see. All right, I kind of like these two bars here. And I think I might be able to get away with taking this one clip and maybe this becomes two different sections of a bass line where maybe this first one could be these first two bars and the next one could be the next two bars. Something like that, all right? But let's stick with this for now. And I just wanna get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Another quick thing that I should point out since we're dealing with this bass sound before I add any other fancy stuff. If we go back to the dual oscillator section, we have a glide knob here. And if I want some of my notes to slide, uh, I can just turn up the glide amount. And I also have the option to determine if glide should only work when the notes overlap. Glide on legato only. This is currently off. So if I increase glide, the notes will glide to the next note's pitch, whether they overlap or not. And for this, it might be kind of cool. So let's go ahead and check that out. I like that. Let's try to get our sub oscillator back involved in the party now, now that I know how all this sounds. I think our buddy's a little too low. And, oh yeah, that's what I wanna do. Let's do this. Yeah, the sub's a bit low. But if it's a sine wave, I think it'll work a bit better. Yeah, that's gonna be nice and beefy in the club. Let's go over here and I just want to make sure that my bass is not popping due to the amplitude envelope having too quick of an attack. All right. And since my sub is just a sine wave, I think I'm pretty good. Don't need to worry about the filter. It's only generating the fundamental frequency. So, uh, cool. Let's make it over here to our output. Um, and there's actually, I think, maybe one more thing that I'd like to do before we can, before we totally move on. So let me go back to the control one page. Um, we have a number of modulators here. I'm only using the filter envelope. It might be nice to use the LFO as well to get a little bit more filter movement here. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and modulate the filter frequency. Now with the filter envelope, this is already linked to the filter, so we didn't have to actually um, target the filter, right? We didn't have to do any sort of modulation mapping or anything. Uh, with the LFO, we will. So there's a couple ways that we can approach this. You see here in the control page, all of these modulators have this little squiggly arrow thing. 
And if I click here, uh, it's going to say new destination, right? So this is my source. My modulation source is LFO1 from Control1. And then I could click here, and now anything that has a circle around it could be uh, a target, right? A destination for the LFO. Let me go to synth page one, and I want my destination to be the cutoff of the low pass filter. If I click on this, it's being modulated by the LFO, but that's just insane. Look at that. Hold up. Let's. That, that, nah, don't do that. So we need to fix some things here. Now, before I leave this modulation summary area, we see, we click on this. This is going to be giving us a summary of all the things that are being modulated. If I click on this little semicircle, this is going to let me control how much this is being modulated, uh, whether it's bipolar or not. Does it go only above or below, or does it do both? All right. But as you can see, the main thing it doesn't allow me to do here is change the speed or any of the LFO parameters. This is way too fast, and it probably needs to sync to my tempo. So uh, this smaller amount seems fine but everything else I need to fix needs to happen on the control page. All right, LFO one is here. Uh, I'd like this to sync to my tempo. When I choose sync, uh, keep in mind, this knob doesn't snap to these values. So even though it says sync, uh, you're gonna have to be pretty careful about setting this if you want the sync to be exact, all right? Uh, the other thing I'd like to do is make it so that the LFO is basically re-triggered every time I play a note. Uh, and the button doesn't say retrig, but we have keyboard reset, which is essentially an LFO retrig. Uh, so that every time I play a note, the waveform will start at the beginning of its cycle. Uh, and I think that'll be nice. So let me play this now, uh, and we'll hear how the LFO is influencing the filter. <laughs> All right, so we got the combination of the LFO and the filter envelope, and that's pretty cool. Um, I think there is one more thing I'd like to do, uh, and then I'll move on from this particular sound. Uh, I think it'd be fun if the LFO, uh, if the sync rate was randomly uh, modulated every time a note played, um, or just over time, if the sync rate just changed. So then that filter modulation won't sound the same for every single note. And we can do this really easily because we have two random modulators over here that are just begging to be used. We saw before that I was able to click on this arrow and then I can click on a parameter uh, and map things that way. Another way I could do this, the way that I actually prefer is you can just right click on a parameter. And once you do that, it opens up the modulation mapping area on the left side. And now I can choose uh, what should modulate this. Now, when you do this, keep in mind, there's global parameters here. This is basically uh, things that would come from your MIDI controller. These are expression controls in green. You have a page for controllers one, so the control one page, and controllers two. So both of these modulation pages can uh, modulate things from either synth or the output. It's pretty flexible. It's, it's honestly really, really impressive. Uh, it's been fun to experiment with that. So uh, as I said, I want random one from controllers one to modulate the rate of LFO one. So I just click here and there it is. Excellent. Let's click here and I would like this to be bipolar, but I don't want the amount to be so crazy. Let's do that. Let me play the clip so then we can hear the effect of this. I don't want it to go too crazy. And I think the, the amount is too much too. Maybe something like this. Okay. Last thing I want to do is I'm going to use slew so that the changes are a bit more smooth and it doesn't just jump. There we go. That's a bit better. 
Um, okay, that's actually kind of cool. Okay, last thing here. Uh, I mentioned the whole idea of utilizing some saturation. All right. Um, if I go to the output area, even though I'm only using synth one, uh, we see to the left we have synth one effects. So these are all things that can directly influence the output of uh, synth one, and we have saturation. Right now the saturation is off, but we see there's four different modes. So I'm going to dial in some tube saturation, and we'll increase the amount. Let's just hear what it gives us. <laughs> So, no saturation. A little bit of tube saturation goes a long way. Um, and I think I'm actually okay with this for now, other than I just want to add a bit more release to the amplitude envelope. Okay, cool. So there we go. I have a bass sound that I like. This has an interesting sense of movement. It's pretty fat, really full, and it gives me something kind of funky to go on so that I can work on another type of sound.